Good morning, all of you. Welcome to Ansarkaris. In this video, we'll be analyzing the newspapers for 24th of April 2023. So let us start with the analysis. So first of all, Amrit Paul Singh he has been held in Punjab and he's been shifted to jail in Assam. So finally, he's been caught. And uh, like different acts that would be used against him, they would become important for us. So here... He's a pro Khalistan radical preacher, Amritpal Singh, and he's been facing the detention under the National Security Act. So he was arrested from the Moga district and he's been taken to the Dibrugarh jail in Assam. So the National Security Act that becomes important. You can find out the important provisions, key concept si circumstances, may concept si conditions may it is used, and is kya important features. Hai? So you can just Google and you will get all the important things. Apart from that, so gig economy ki baat kare, unke, like regarding a particular law hona chahiye, unke welfare ko malab, consider karte hai, kyunki abhi cheeze bhoat unorganized hai. So that's there and pe, it is in the context of state of Rajasthan, kyunki wahan pe elections hone wale hai. So, gig workers uh, with the welfare law, this is one of the main things. And they are working on one law, Joki hai uh, the Rajasthan's platform based gig workers registration and welfare bill 2023, which has stringent provisions against errant aggregators, including barring them from operating in the state. So, which like welfare, dekhte hai, malab, once it becomes a law, we'll be going through it because all India is a law hona chahi, which is protecting the rights and interests of the gig workers because India may gig economy ka garam size dekhe, so that is very huge. So in that context, this law is very important and it's important to have a one pan India law for it. So coming to the editorial page, where India as the most populous can be more boon than bane. So let's go through this analysis. So China, it is projected to hand over this baton of the most populous country to India by mid-2023. But for India, there are greater prospects for demographic advantage than serious concerns. So definitely India, mein we are having this demographic dividend wala advantage. And what is important is if we have to utilize it, we need to focus upon uh, the skills that we provide, the human resource, which we talk about. So, skilled manpower is important hai if we really want to take advantage of this opportunity. And the country must focus on reaping the available demographic dividend. So, we are talking about definitely India would be the most populous country by mid of this year. But it is challenges se zyada hamare liye advantages hain so considering the limited information for both china and india especially in the absence of census 2021 so jo census 2021 hona tha wo delay hota ja raha hai and initially the initial reason of delay was obviously covid 19 but now we are having general elections next year so again uski wajah se it has been delayed so data both limited paas, but it is difficult to predict the exact date on which the demographic order it will change. So this is important that we know the exact date pata ho ki si date ko India would become the most populous country. And apart from that, our estimated population, hai, it would be like uh, around 142.86 crores by mid-2023 and will be overtaking China's population. So China may population is estimated around 142.57 crore people.
So while the debate on the population growth in India is not new, obviously this is not a new debate, there are general and pessimistic views over this change in the demographic rank order. Kuch malab concerns bhi hai, but more than concerns, we are having opportunities and advantages. And population control, therefore, it is widely being seen as a panacea to avoid a grim future. So there is a need to look deeper into the issue from an empirical and scientific perspective. So in basis, pe, malab, critically analyze karna would be much more fruitful. So is it a dividend or a disaster for India? So we'll be looking into that. So isko, like, samajne ke, like, samajne ke liye, we need to understand the nature of population growth. What is that in India? How is that happening? What is the size and its composition as well as the mechanisms through which a country translates the demographic bonus into economic dividend? So mechanisms through which we translate a demographic bonus into economic dividend. So we'll be understanding all these things. So talking about population size, growth, and its composition. So population in itself, it is definitely not a burden. But if human resource would remain unskilled, then it definitely it would become a burden. So instead, it is the nature of the population growth. So zada matter karta hai. nature of population growth size and kya composition hai, jo decide karta hai when a population becomes a resource or a burden. So nature is other important hai, rather than saying that agar India is going to be the world's most populous country. So that is kind of a burden for us. No, that would be a wrong thing. So simply population ko hum blame shift nahi kar sakte. So population, it is a resource as long as country is carrying capacity, it is intact. So carrying capacity, it is not just per capita availability of the natural resources. It is the dynamic concept of which like what changes according to the changing technology we have, the efficiency of the production and consumption systems of a country. So when we talk carrying capacity, ki baat karte, to it is not just you know the narrow idea that per capita natural resources are available. Obviously, population increase or increase natural resources are limited. Hai. So per capita availability of natural resources, definitely it would fall with increasing population. But this would be a narrow interpretation of this term. If we talk about carrying capacity, mein, if we include ki, uh, technology is changing, how it is evolving with time, usse efficiency of production change, ho hai, consumption systems change. Ho hai. So that would make things much more broader and much more relevant. So a deeper look into the trends of the population's growth, size and composition, it gives one an idea of whether India it has an overpopulation that can disrupt this carrying capacity or not. So, agar hum nature ko understand karenge, to hume pata chalega ki kya India mein really are we overpopulated, jo ki hamari carrying capacity ko disrupt kar sakta hai. To total fertility rate humne pehle bhi dekha tha, we have reached this level of 2 in 2023. So, total fertility rate ki agar hum simple definition ya meaning ki baat kare, to it is the total number of children that a woman expects during her entire lifetime. So, we have reached 2. So, every woman uh, she would be like having two children during her entire life. And this has come down from the level of six. So, pehle time mein around like, if I talk about 1970s, so total fertility rate was at six. So, it has come down to two by 2023. So, India, it is already at the replacement level fertility. So, replacement level ka matlab bhi pe clear hona chahiye. Replacement level, matlab ki there are obviously two parents father and mother and if you'll have two children so obviously those two children will replace the parents so that is the like exact two pe hum pahunch gaye hain but total fertility rate jo hai wo replacement level se bhi kam hota ja raha hai so this is one trend jo uh, aapko mind mein rakhna important hai and this is indicating ki population it is on a path towards stabilization so the replacement uh, rate 2 hai and total fertility rate bhi 2 uh, we have reached that level so this matlab hai ki aane wale time mein population stabilize hoti hui hame dikhai degi population explosion ya population mein itni zyada growth hame nahi dekhne ko milegi so however it continues to experience the positive growth but in a deaccelerated mode until 2064 so population growth hogi but wo ek deaccelerated mode mein hogi so jab hum ye matlab graph draw karte hain for this kind of a trend 
तो फर्स्ट इट इज इंक्रीजिंग पॉजिटिवली अपवर्ड्स एंड उसके बाद एक स्टेबलाइजेशन टॉप लेवल अचीव हो जाते हैं एंड उसके बाद इट स्टार्ट्स फॉलिंग सो दिस इज बेसिकली इसको हम दैट्स हाउ वी रिप्रेजेंटेड ऑन अ ग्राफ एंड सो 2064 तक ये ट्रेंड चलेगा फ्रॉम विच पॉइंट इट विल बिकम नेगेटिव ग्रोथ सो उसके बाद वो डाउनफॉल होने लगेगा एंड देन दैट्स व्हेन वी विल से कि पॉपुलेशन now it would start declining so the peak of india's population size it will uh, be around 169.6 crore people by 2063 so this is the estimate ki ye hamara peak level of population hone wala hai jo hum achieve kar lenge by 2063 however agar hum dekhe at only the total population size which is often assumed as the number of mouths to feed so it is grossly misleading so again wo bahut narrow interpretation ho jayegi aaj ke time mein agar aap simply bologe total population size kitna hai wo bahut zyada increase ho raha hai usse fir aap bologe kya challenges hai to food insecurity ke challenges aa jayenge employment kitne logo ko doge jab limited resources hain scarce resources hain so this would be very narrow interpretation so we need to look at ki abhi hamari population ke jab hum डेमोग्राफिक्स को अंडरस्टैंड करने की बात करते हैं तो उसमें आ जाता है एज कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन व्हिच टेल्स अबाउट द अवेलेबल सपोर्ट रेशियो इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ लाइक द नंबर ऑफ वर्किंग एज पॉपुलेशन दैट इज एज ग्रुप होता है बिटवीन 15 टू 64 इयर्स दैट इज द वर्किंग एज पॉपुलेशन सो इस रेशियो को हम देखते हैं व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट द एज कॉम्पोजिशन एंड देन डिपेंडेंट पॉपुलेशन इज 0 टू 14 इयर्स सो दिस इज the child population and then population that is above 65 years so ye aa gaye dependent population mein so ab hame dekhna hai ki in teen category sorry do categories mein kya size hai population ka kaun se matlab maximum size kaun se mein hai working age mein hai ki dependent mein hai so dependent mein children ho gaya and old age population ho gaya working age mein uh, 15 to 64 years ki jo population group hai that would be under the working age population so looking at population composition of india there are greater prospects for demographic dividend than the disaster kyunki agar hum baat kare working age population ki india mein so it is having 68% of the population jo india mein aaj ke time mein working age population mein fall karti hai so that's huge and india is only few of the countries jiske paas abhi ye opportunity hai of utilizing this demographic dividend and most of the advanced worlds china mein baat kare japan mein baat kare to wahan pe aging population ya dependent population ka size zyada increase ho raha hai to obviously uski wajah se natural resources pe pressure zyada increase ho jayega government ke jo fiscal resources hai us pe zyada pressure increase ho jayega government itna development ke liye expenditure nahi kar payegi so most of the expenditure would go in the form of pension social security uh, universal health care services provide karte hain so that's the main challenge and india may you need to remember this number that's a very significant data ki 68% of the population in india falls in the group of working age group so we continue to have this demographic window of opportunity for the next 35 years to reap an economic dividend now demographic dividend ye opportunity to hamare hath mein hai for the next 35 years but ab jo main important cheez hai we need to transform this into economic dividend also agar hame actually iska benefit uthana hai to however we seen ki availability of demographic window of opportunity in itself it will not automatically turn into the economic dividend obviously a transition automatically nahi ho sakta hai so we need to work on key mechanisms like we need to translate the demographic bonus into economic dividend so kuch aise steps policies schemes aise hame leke aani padegi which will ensure this transition so what are the relevant mechanisms so uh, in this article we will talk about four of them or uh, that would be helping us in translating this demographic bonus to economic dividend so first is employment second ho gaya education and skills third is healthcare conditions fourth is governance so ye four areas hain four mechanisms hain jiske through we can convert it into the economic dividend employment education and skills healthcare conditions and governance so employment or job creation definitely that is important mechanism so if uh, india it is able to generate sufficient and quality jobs for its bulging working age population so we'll be realizing this demographic dividend and it would be like becoming a reality next comes the uh, education and 
skills a generation so that we are ensuring a healthy lifespan by preventing diseases and disabilities and apart from that a skilled or healthy workforce hogi so that is not only critical for the better productivity of an economic activity but it also reduces excessive public spending and, and it helps in greater capital creation so skilled manpower hogi definitely jo efficiency hogi aap kam time mein zyada kaam kar paoge definitely yahan pe technology bhi important role play karti hai but technology bhi tabhi important role play karegi agar jo workforce hogi they would be knowing ki how they have to utilize that the that a particular machine or particular technology in terms of software so skills generation education area bahut important hai next we have good governance which is reflected through the consitus policies so that is uh, another important aspects and this helps in creating healthy environment for increasing efficiency and productivity of the population so good governance uh, obviously red tapeism ko kam karna corruption ko kam karna we are making things online taki accountability bani rahe transparency bani rahe things are done in a time based manner with a proper like target levels so we are moving towards that and more and more services they are being digitized healthcare services ki baat karo data ki baat karo so uh like governance may obviously data would also be helping us in improving the quality of governance so as we say ki data is the new oil so these are the important mechanisms jo hame help karenge in uh, like translating the demographic dividend into the economic dividend so these were the important things and what the country needs right now it is policies jo support karta hai enabling environment that can provide us high quality education good health care respectable employment opportunities good infrastructure gender empowerment so good infrastructure ki bhi agar hum baat kare to uh, in this particular union budget only government it has announced huge amount it has allocated huge amount when it comes to infrastructural development for the capital expenditure so we are working upon building the capital and that would definitely help in you know increasing and improving the ease of doing business also and attracting more fdi so if india falls short in this its demographic dividend then we can say ki it would become a demographic disaster for india so that's all about uh, this population aspect and this was a good analysis here moving forward so a new troika for india's northeast region so here the region comprising india's eight northeastern states aapko pata hona chahiye you need to have the clarity regarding kaun si states kahan located hai kaun si state kaun si state ko border karte hain ya kisi country ko border karte hain nahi so firstly map work bahut important ho jata hai to eight northeastern states jo hai arunachal pradesh assam manipur meghalaya mizoram nagaland tripura and sikkim so it is undergoing dramatic changes so it has overcome several security challenges ki baat karo it is now heading towards economic development so political changes they have been helpful there and so is the extensive web of linkages with the neighboring bangladesh so besides japan it has emerged as a significant development partner for both india and bangladesh so japan is also an important partner when it comes to development in the northeastern india and the third india japan intellectual dialogue which was hosted by the asian confluence in agartala tripura it was an ideal opportunity to assess the evolving thinking of the experts and policy makers it showed ki the current decade it may produce path breaking changes in the northeast bringing the troika of bangladesh india and japan closer so this is the troika that we were talking about india bangladesh and japan so they are working in collaboration when we talk about development of northeastern india so vision kya hai and what are the opportunities in front of us so one of the most important project it is the development of matarbari deep sea port in the south eastern coast of bangladesh so matarbari deep sea port location important ho jati hai it is located in the south eastern coast of bangladesh so it is being constructed with japanese assistance and it is scheduled to be operational by 2027 and as per a study this port is going to be a game changer so to be optimally viable it will have to cater to the needs of bangladesh also and india's northeastern states so long term vision is uh, 
for Bangladesh and Northeast to become a hub and key industrial corridor of this region, serving a population of 220 million. So vision is that we need to develop this uh, part in this area uh, along with Bangladesh into a key industrial corridor. And apart from that, uh, the Japanese ambassador to India also emphasized uh, that while increased connectivity of the roads and railways is important, it is not enough without the creation of regional industrial value chains. So connectivity pe aap focus kar loge, but at the same time, regional industrial value chains may be development karna, us pe kaam karna is equally important. And hence, rapid industrialization in sectors where Northeast enjoys competitive advantage assumes significant. So, focus on the northeastern states, which areas have competitive advantage, hai, pe hume, we need to move forward. And this plan is sound because it ensures that the new connectivity links, they will be fully utilized and productive. And roads and ports, they must be accompanied by job opportunities that come only from the new industrial enterprises set with the national foreign investment. So, a joint focus on the comprehensive connectivity and accelerating industrialization in Bangladesh and Northeast is likely to be the priority. So focusing upon comprehensive connectivity and accelerating industrialization. So that's important and that's the focus area priority, the vision for this particular region of India and Bangladesh. So Northeast, it is uh, blessed with vast natural resources, its strategic location. So it is sharing borders with Nepal, Bhutan, China, Bangladesh, and Myanmar. So that's an asset. So strategic location, definitely from security perspective also, it is very important. And creating value chains and manufacturing products when we are sharing borders with so many countries. So that would be also helping us a lot. So important uh, areas, agro-processing, man-made fibers, handicrafts, assembly of two-wheelers and perhaps mobile phones and pharmaceuticals. So these are some important areas hai, which enjoys competitive advantage as far as the northeastern India is concerned. So the population with its good education already excels in the services sector, drawing potential investor retention also. So the population which is there, they're also having educated, they're skilled enough. And also, the challenge aata tha for the people living in the northeastern India was they had to migrate for you know employment opportunities to other parts of India. So, a key challenge we will be able to handle it and tackle this thing also. So, challenges ki baat kare, of course, there are challenges uh, jo expand, jo address karne important hai by expanding policy convergence and taking people along. And Japan, is, uh, as a single investor in the Northeast, that is unworkable. So, obviously, a country kitna invest karegi and dependent upon just one country, that would also be not desirable. So, Indian companies ko bhi ma invest karna important hai. India must ease the restrictions on the flow of investments, jo bhi restrictions hai on the flow of investment for northeastern india because obviously abhi humne baat kari thi ki it is it enjoys this strategic location so kuch restrictions imposed ki gayi hai on flow of investments from bangladesh so unko thoda ease out karna jo indian companies hai they need to come forward and not just you know we we can't rely on just one country uh, like japan for investments in northeastern india so the three governments they should also forge closer linkages of economic cooperation so another important argument it was advanced by the bangladesh minister of state for foreign affairs was that he stressed that dhaka and new delhi they have succeeded in almost restoring pre-1965 infrastructure connectivity between india and bangladesh and they are now going beyond it so India Bangladesh ke beech mein kuch railway links hai, unka naam hume pata hone important hai. And apart from that, uh, two additional points like uh, first, when issues of regional cooperation and integration were discussed kiya jate hai, bahut kam attention pe jati hai uh, to BIMSTEC. So BIMSTEC uh, is definitely one area jahan se hume bahut kuch uh, mil sakta hai. And iske alawa BIMSTEC, uh, सबसे पहले तो फुल फॉर्म ही पता होना चाहिए उसके अलावा कौन सी मेंबर कंट्रीज हैं क्या डिस्टिंक्ट इनिशिएटिव्स लिए गए हैं अंडर बिमस्टेक सो ऑल दैट बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट एंड this must change so that your grouping has that progresses towards its vision of establishing the bay of bengal community 
so isliye uh, we need to you know pay uh, adequate attention to bimstech also and the all the member countries ke jo heads the they were also invited as a chief guest in republic day parade also so india is focusing upon bimstech but other member countries they need to do the same and second important area is the goal of connecting a large part of south asia with south east asian countries so jo asean member countries hain association of south east asian nation ke jo member countries hain unke sath bhi connect activity develop and establish karna would be an important aspect so this leadership it can come from the triad of bangladesh india and japan so that's bij so aapko pata hona chahiye bij what do we mean by bij and it's a forum as a forum like it should be launched first at the level of foreign ministers and a move that will be welcome in the northeast also so ye kuch important developments thi for the northeastern india and the surrounding countries so russia's oil imports to india rises for the trade deficit balloons so jo trade deficit hai obviously wo increase hoga agar hum zyada zyada import karte jayenge with time so india accounts for more than 70% of the sea borne supplies of the great so far this month and china has it, uh, it accounts for nearly 20% of them so having a look at chart 1 it is showing the share of select top countries in india's crude oil imports for the period period april to feb for the past 4 years so agar past 4 years ka hum trend dekhe when we talk about crude oil imports into india so almost highest share hamesha se chal raha tha iraq ka followed by saudi arabia एंड यू ए तो ये ट्रेंड हम बोल सकते हो टॉप थ्री कंट्रीज थी फॉर ऑलमोस्ट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू की अगर हम बात करें सो टॉप पे था मतलब टॉप थ्री क्रूड ऑयल इम्पोर्टिंग कंट्रीज फॉर इंडिया वर इराक सऊदी अरेबिया एंड रशिया सॉरी यू ए इराक सऊदी अरेबिया एंड यू ए उसके बाद यू एस ए था नाउ वी आर सींग की जो ये रेड लाइन आप ग्राफ देख रहे हो दिस इज फॉर रशिया सो टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू से the way it has spiked you can see and it has like surpassed saudi arabia uae us jo niche wali countries thi unko to sabko cross kar diya hai and you can see ki usse pehle kitne lower level pe russia ka share tha in terms of providing crude oil to india but now iraq abhi top pe chal raha hai uske baad we have russia then we have saudi arabia to ye chronology pata hona important hai from the examination perspective also and apart from this so but uh, agar ye jo chart 1 mein humne trend dekha hai this is only for april to february in the last 4 years so agar hum pure year wise dekhe i guess so isme chart 2 it is talking about the share of select top countries in india's crude oil imports in the last 7 months so last 7 months ke agar hum baat kare to usme russia number 1 pe hai then we have usa sorry not us it is uh, saudi arabia russia is on top second is uh, saudi arabia third is iraq and fourth is uae uske baad so okay top four countries yahi hain for the last 7 months so i'll repeat this again russia then we have saudi arabia iraq and uae All right, so you can note then uh, note this uh, trend and ये बहुत important type के questions है जो definitely पूछे जाते हैं and ऐसे type के questions already पूछे भी जा चुके हैं so that's there and moving forward so European Union की new crypto legislation let's have a look at this quickly so what kind of crypto assets हैं जो Mica it seeks to regulate so इनके regulation की बात की गई है what are the regulatory requirements जो impose ki gayi hai on the crypto industry in european union and how has the law been received so logo ka kya reaction hai for this law and what are the aspects left out by this regulation so kya missing areas hain and how does it compare to the crypto regulation in india so there is a comparison also with india so here sabse pehla question yahi aata hai कि रेगुलेशन आपको करना है क्यों है व्हाई यू नीड टू रेगुलेट इट सो इससे पहले विल जस्ट गो थ्रू द इंट्रोडक्शन व्हिच इज सेइंग कि यूरोपियन पार्लियामेंट व्हिच इज द लेजिस्लेटिव बॉडी ऑफ द 27 कंट्री ब्लॉक यूरोपियन यूनियन 
So it has approved the world's first set of comprehensive rules to bring largely unregulated cryptos markets under the ambit of regulation by government authorities. So the regulation, which is called Markets in Crypto Assets, which is in short MICA, it will come into force after the formal approval by the member states. So European Union, 27 countries. So once they approve it, so finally it would be implemented. So markets in crypto assets. So why this regulation having a comprehensive framework like MICA for 27 countries in Europe, it is not only it will harmonize the crypto industry, but it would also give European Union a competitive edge in its growth compared to the US or the UK, which lack the regulatory clarity. So when it comes to Joby, like investors and they are investing into cryptos, obviously, uh, कुछ ना कुछ फेयर उनके माइंड में ये चलता रहता होगा अगर ऑब्वियसली uh, कोई अभी ऐसा लेजिसलेशन नहीं है तो उनके इंटरेस्ट प्रोटेक्शन के लिए दिस रेगुलेशन बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्योंकि अगर हम नॉर्मली बात करें तो क्रिप्टोस दे आर नॉट रेगुलेटेड दे आर नॉट रेगुलेटेड बाय सेंट्रल बैंक्स इन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज जैसे जो नॉर्मल करेंसीज हैं so they are different in that perspective so easily regulation definitely important ho jata hai when we talk about the interest of the investors and इसकी वजह से ऑब्वियसली जो यूरोपियन यूनियन कंट्रीज है दे वुड बी हैविंग दिस कॉम्पिटेटिव एडवांटेज बिकॉज नाउ दे आर कमिंग अप विद दिस लॉ सो मोर इंपॉर्टेंटली 2022 में वी सो सम ऑफ द बिगेस्ट फेलियर्स एंड वाइप आउट्स इन द क्रिप्टो इंडस्ट्री इन्वॉल्विंग बैंक रब्सीज एंड फ्रॉड स्कैंडल्स सो पिछले साल हमने डेफिनेटली बहुत सारे ऐसे स्कैम स्कैंडल्स बैंक रब्सीज एंड मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग फ्रॉड्स देखे हैं स्पेसिफिकली अगर हम साइबर अटैक्स की भी बात करें तो उसमें भी द अटैकर्स दे हैव डिमांडेड क्रिप्टो करेंसीज इन रिटर्न सो दैट्स हाउ दे आर बीइंग मिस आल्सो एंड लाइक चाहे आप बात करें कोलैप्स ऑफ द क्रिप्टो एक्सचेंज एफटीएक्स एंड इट्स पैट विद द बिनांस और द फेलियर ऑफ टेरा लूना सो ये कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट इवेंट्स हुए थे रिगार्डिंग क्रिप्टोज लास्ट ईयर and it is associated uh, like it's associated stable coin also so this was also a part of it so ye aapko pata hone chahiye jo turns hai like agar uh, aa jaye matlab aise types ki aise type ke questions bhi aate hain ki aapko terms sari related to cryptocurrencies likh denge but directly usme cryptocurrency wala word obviously nahi hoga to question ye bola ga ki all these terms are related to what so chahe wahan pe terra luna likha ho stable coin likha ho ftx ho ya binance ho so all these are related to cryptocurrencies so liquidity shortage was the main reason which caused uh, which was caused by these shocks it led to other crypto lending platforms to hold the customer transfers and withdrawals before filing for the bankruptcy so what kind of assets uh, mica cover karne wala hai so the legislation it will apply to crypto assets which are broadly defined in the text as a digital representation of a value or a right that uses cryptography for security and it is in the form of a coin or a token or any other digital medium which may be transferred stored electro uh, electronically using uh, the distributed ledger technology or similar technology so this is matlab crypto assets ki definition provide ki gayi hai and this definition it is implying ki it will apply not only to jo traditional cryptocurrencies are like bitcoin ho gaya ethereum ho gaya but jo new cryptocurrencies aa rahi hai us pe bhi ye law applicable hoga so one of the new ones is the stable coins and jo cheeze uh, basically ye law cover nahi karne wala hai that is it will be not regulating digital assets that would qualify as transferable securities and function like shares or their equivalents so jo digital assets hai it is not covering up them and it will also not regulate central bank digital currencies which are issued by the european central bank and the digital assets issued by the national central banks of european union member countries so obviously jo central banks ki digital currencies and digital assets hai usko bhi it would be away from that so having a look at what are the new rules under this so it will impose compliance on the issuers of crypto assets eh? they would have to like on pay compliance definitely they would have to comply with the new set of rules who are defined as the legal persons jo offer karte hain to public any type of crypto assets so these are the issuers of crypto assets and it will apply to the crypto asset service providers also providing one or more of these services like अच्छा ये बात करें आप ऑपरेशन ऑफ ट्रेडिंग प्लेटफॉर्म लाइक पॉइंट बेस हैं एंड 
custody and administration of crypto assets ki baat ho gayi and the exchange of crypto assets for funds like all related to trading and investment and storage of the cryptocurrencies so it would be definitely applicable on these crypto asset service providers also and apart from this and jo uh, crypto companies hogi they need to send the information of senders and recipients of the crypto assets to their local anti money laundering authority also to prevent laundering and terror financing activities so ye data this needs to be made available to the anti money laundering authorities in uh, the respective countries so talking about ki what is the reaction of the people against this law so leaders at some of the biggest cryptocurrency firms they have taken exception to some aspects of mica but the broad view ki agar hum baat kare to it is uh, better to have a regulatory framework than having no rules at all and attracting regulatory action on a case by case basis without clarity so pehle ka scenario yahi tha koi proper regulation nahi tha koi law nahi tha proper set of rules nahi tha so matlab har particular case by case basis pe things were dealt with and obviously us cheez mein there was lack of clarity so compared to this thing obviously having a regulatory framework is rather much more important and but uh, at the same time agar hum baat kare to mica it has been in development for the past 3 years so some experts they feel ki regulation is already lagard in covering the newer vulnerabilities in the crypto industry so since uh, matlab 3 saal se things are evolving in this mica thing in this law so jo new vulnerabilities jo evolve ho rahi hain they are like lagging in this law and for instance like it is not covering the practices like crypto staking and lending which led to some of the industry's biggest failure last year so this is not a part of this law so this is one concern and you need to look into the meaning of what do we mean by crypto staking and lending so how is crypto regulated in india so ab india ki baat karte hain recently yahan pe uh, like india mein bhi abhi recent union budget mein hi we saw the major changes regarding the cryptocurrency so isse pehle india mein obviously kuch uh, like tax applicable nahi tha there was nothing when we talk about the cryptos but people were still they were investing into cryptos because jo brokers hain apps hain um they were there they were functioning and people were like massively they were investing into cryptos but yahan pe lack of awareness you know you get to hear from someone ki maine itna paisa lagaya itna fayda ho gaya so this basically misleads people kyunki agar aap aware nahi ho and aap apna you you just invest your hard and money into cryptos without proper knowledge so definitely that is a very risky step that you take so india mein it is like yet to have a comprehensive regulatory framework of the crypto assets abhi india mein we don't have any particular law comprehensive intensive law which is particularly you know talking about specifically the regulation of the cryptocurrencies so a draft legislation on the same it is reportedly in the works so let's see when it comes up and a full fledged regulation aside abhi nahi hai aisa koi full fledged regulation that is aside because we don't have a law and we are like just having this information ki work is going on regarding the same so indian government it has taken certain steps to bring the cryptocurrencies under the ambit of specific authorities and taxation ki agar hum baat kare to in this union budget of 2022 finance ministry said ki cryptocurrency trading in india it has seen a phenomenal increase ab maine baat kar raha like uh, important brokers ki baat kare to coin cdx ho gaya jisse people they are investing in cryptos so we saw phenomenal increase these emphasize on this term phenomenal increase jab hum cryptocurrency trading ki baat karte hain and uh, 30% tax has been imposed on the income from the transfer of any virtual digital asset so in march last year government placed all the transactions which are like the virtual digital assets under the purview of the prevention of money laundering act also so these are some of the changes and 1% of tds has also been in, uh, like imposed upon the profit that you earn or uh, through these cryptocurrency investing or trading whatever you do now coming to the next important topic which is like ki uh, how can a juvenile be tried as an adult in the court so let's uh 
understand this area also. So what are the recently issued guidelines by the National Commission for Protection of Children? So a new set of guidelines has been issued and that is for trying a juvenile in case of heinous crimes. So if a juvenile a heinous crime, commit kar deta hai, to kaise aap us case ko deal karoge? how you will be like trying a juvenile as an adult in the court and what is the role of juvenile justice board. So we'll understand all these aspects. So let's start with the analysis. So we are having this juvenile justice board under section 15 of the juvenile justice act. So the National Commission for Protection of Children, they have recently issued the guidelines for conducting a preliminary assessment by the Juvenile Justice Board. So Juvenile Justice Board ko banaya gaya tha under section 15 of the Juvenile Justice Act of 2015. So this preliminary assessment, it is to ascertain whether a juvenile, it can be tried as an adult or not. So is uh, assessment ke through, yehi jani ki koshish ki jayegi, kya jo juvenile hoga, can he or she be tried as an adult or not? So, usse regarding guidelines issue ki gai hai and replacing the Juvenile Justice Act of 2000, jo new act hai 2015 ki, it is like for the first time provided for trying juveniles in the age group of 16 to 18 years as adults in case of heinous offenses. So, agar kise juvenile ne heinous offense commit kya hai and they fall in this age group of 16 to 18 years. So, this Juvenile Justice Act jo 2015 mele kya thi, it for the very first time talked about trying those juveniles as adults. So, this is an important thing. So, how does a child get tried as an adult? So, let's understand this thing. So the act, it has categorized the offenses committed by children into three categories. So offenses ko three categories mein divide kiya gaya hai. That is petty offenses, jo bohut chote mote offenses hote hain. Second is serious offenses, thode, like petty offenses se thode serious. And third is heinous offenses, bohut heinous offenses, jif mein like, murder ki baat ho gai. So like these. Uh, we have the heinous offenses. So section 15 of the Juvenile Justice Act it provides that in case of heinous offense alleged to have been committed by a child who has completed or is above the age of 16 years, the board shall conduct a preliminary assessment regarding his mental and physical capacity to commit such an offense, ability to understand the consequences of the offense and the circumstances in which he allegedly committed the offense. So, ye sari cheeze assess ki jati hai during the preliminary assessment. Agar kisi bachche ne who is 16 years of age or above, agar koi heinous crime commit kiya hai to. And then we have the section 18 of the act, which is like, it is further suggesting key if the board, after this preliminary assessment under section 15, it is passing in order key, there is a need for trial of the said child as an adult. So, agar preliminary assessment ke baad, this juvenile justice board is saying ki the child needs to be tried as an adult, then the board may order the transfer of the case to the children's court having jurisdiction to try such offenses. So, uske baad, it is the children's court, jo basically they'll be trying such offenses. So the sole objective of having such a preliminary assessment is to determine the child within the age group of 16 to 18 should be tried as an adult in case of heinous offenses or not. So main motive preliminary assessment ka yahi rehta hai and responsibilities kya hai when we talk about the juvenile justice board. So yaha pe uh, the guidelines they further make it clear ki juvenile justice board jo hoga it shall be responsible for the preliminary assessment. So complete responsibility preliminary assessment ki juvenile justice board ki hai and also it provides the child, the child's family and their counsel a copy of the order also. So, ye cheeze bhi provide ki jati hai and it, it, it further states ki in case juvenile justice board does not have at least one member who is a practicing professional with a degree in child psychology or child psychiatry, the board shall take the assistance of psychologists or experts who have the experience of working with children in difficult times. So, we need to have clarity about ki, who all are the members of juvenile justice board. 
सो so, यहाँ पे एक मेंबर की बात की गई है बट हमें सबके बारे में पता होना इम्पोर्टेंट है सो चाइल्ड शुड ऑल्सो बी प्रोवाइडेड विद लीगल एड काउंसिल थ्रू द डिस्ट्रिक्ट लीगल सर्विसेज अथॉरिटी सो दिस इज अनदर इम्पोर्टेंट बॉडी हु शैल बी प्रेजेंट ड्यूरिंग द प्रिलिमिनरी असेसमेंट सो वन ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द जो भी न्यू गाइडलाइन इश्यू की गई है इट इज कि इट मैंडेट्स द एक्सपर्ट्स हु हैव द रिक्वायर्ड क्वालिफिकेशन टू असेस द जुवेनाइल जस्टिस बोर्ड टू अंडरगो ट्रेनिंग कंसर्निंग सेक्शन 15 सो जो एक्सपर्ट्स हैं डिस्पाइट बीइंग एक्सपर्ट्स उनको स्टिल ट्रेनिंग करनी इंपॉर्टेंट होगी एंड ड्यूरिंग द प्रिलिमिनरी असेसमेंट द बोर्ड एंड द एक्सपर्ट्स दे शैल आल्सो एनालाइज एंड टेक इनटू कंसीडरेशन सोशल इन्वेस्टिगेशन रिपोर्ट सो इसको भी making a part of the preliminary assessment would be important to be prepared by the probation officer or the child welfare officer or any social worker or a social background report to be to be prepared after interaction with child or child's family so this would also be an important part of the the preliminary assessment so what is the next thing so ncpcr it is under a statutory obligation under section 109 of the juvenile justice act 2015 to monitor the proper implementation of the provisions of this act so jahan tak ki effective implementation ki agar hum baat kare of this particular act so it is under the authority of this national commission for protection of child rights and your guidelines are they have been made to remove any ambiguity and to clarify the steps that need to be followed so to bring much more clarity and remove all the confusions we have these new guidelines however agar a major issue ki baat kare which remains uh, issue remains the implementation and the absorption of these principles in the system so particularly to be followed by the juvenile justice board and the children's court and a lot of principles which have been made a part of the act have not been given due prominence by the board as well as by the children's court so ye kuch concerns hain and this was again a very very important topic for today So what is this lockbit ransomware? So directly अगर खाली ये term आती है lockbit, so you need to remember कि ये एक ransomware है, and it is specifically targeting only the Apple computers. So if you are using any Mac device, so please be alert and don't just you know get into traps with. So the ransomware it works as a self-spreading malware है, which is not requiring additional instructions. One it has once it has successfully infiltrated a single device with access to an organizational intranet. So it was reportedly responsible for an attack in the UK postal services earlier this year. And so first reported in september 2019 and dubbed the abcd virus due to the file extension used when encrypting the victims files lockbit ransomware is designed to infiltrate victims systems and encrypt the important files so virus is categorized as a crypto virus due to its request for payment in cryptocurrency to decrypt the files on the victims device so aaj hi humne cryptocurrency ki baat kari thi जो यूरोपियन यूनियन में लॉ लेके आ रहे हैं एंड हमने बोला था कि रैंसमवेयर अटैक्स में क्रिप्टो करेंसी डिमांड की जाती है सो इवन इन दिस केस आल्सो इट इज डिमांडिंग क्रिप्टो करेंसी अगर यू वांट टू गेट थिंग्स बैक टू नॉर्मल इन योर डिवाइसेस सो ये हमने देख लिया कि इट इज अल्फ स्प्रेडिंग मालवेयर एंड कोई एडिशनल इंस्ट्रक्शन रिक्वायर्ड नहीं होते हैं वंस इट गेट्स सक्सेसफुली इनफिल्ट्रेटेड इन अ डिवाइस and so it is also known to hide the executable encryption files by disguising them in the .png format thereby avoiding detection by the system defenses also so attackers they use phishing this phish phishing tech tactics hota hai and this is related to again cyber attacks and other social engineering methods to impersonate trusted personnel or authorities to lure the victims into sharing their credentials so you do not have to share your credential details and sometimes the ransomware has also been it has also used brute force to gain access to the intranet server and network of an organization
So we saw that uh, the cases related to aviation staff, which was caught smuggling gold, it the cases they have almost doubled in 2022-23. So nearly 4,000 kg of smuggled gold, it was found between April to Feb. 63% was in Air Force, 29 employees of airlines and airports, they were held for their involvement in the smuggling cases. So maximum of them were recorded from the Mumbai airport, So India sends the aircraft and ships for the evacu for evacuation from Sudan. And as part of uh, our preparations and in order to move swiftly, government of India is pursuing multiple operations. So two Indian Air Force C-130J, they are currently positioned on standby in Jeddah, which is in Saudi Arabia. And INS Sumheda, it has reached Port Sudan. So India and China, they hold the 18th Corps com Commander Talks at Moldo. So just ahead of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the Defense Minister is meeting in the national capital, India and China, in national India and China then on Sunday, held the 18th round of Corps Commander Talks at Moldo on Chinese side in the Eastern Ladakh in continuing efforts to resolve the standoff ongoing since May 2020. So it's almost going to be three years this May and Things have not improved. Yeah, both sectors they have not been resolved. Moving forward, coming to the world page. So Azerbaijan sets up first checkpoint on the key route to its arc rival Armenia. So apart from this, मतलब हमें पता है कि area कितना ज़्यादा news में है तो naturally यहाँ से questions पूछे जा सकते हैं specifically जो map based questions हैं वो बहुत ज़्यादा पूछे जाते हैं तो जो water bodies है different sea Caspian Sea Black Sea और जो important straits हैं rivers हो गई islands हो गए वो सब important हो जाता है so you need to like have a look at all those things as well nations scramble to evacuate citizens as Sudan battles rage so US, UK, they rescue the embassy staff and their family members while you're seeing key France and Germany confirm the initiation of evacuation process of the European citizens and other nation nationals as well. So even India has also sent the plane and the help so that we can evacuate the Indians from Sudan. Taking up mint now. So this may be a very important topic here, which is talking about the bank margins on karte. So uske liye jo term use ki jati hai, that is net interest margins. So simply aapko pata hona chahiye ki banks paisa kaise kamate hain. To usko thoda proper economical sense mein hum bolte hain net interest margins. And aapko pata hai ki like do tarike se interest kaam karte hain jab hum banks ki baat karte hain. एक तो बैंक जो लोन देता है उसके ऊपर जो बोरोवर है उसको ऑब्वियसली जो इंटरेस्ट है वो पे करना पड़ता है तो लोन्स देने के थ्रू बैंक्स पैसा कमाते हैं जो वो इंटरेस्ट उन लोन पे या जो भी कैपिटल वो दे रहे हैं टू द बोरोवर उस पे वो दे ऑन दैट इंटरेस्ट एंड साथ ही साथ बैंक्स को भी कुछ अमाउंट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट देना पड़ता है ऑन द सेविंग्स डिपॉजिट्स जो डिपॉजिटर्स बैंक में अपने बैंक अकाउंट में पैसा रखते हैं उसको भी उसके ऊपर भी आपको कुछ इंटरेस्ट मिलता है तो जो डिफरेंस हो गया इन दोनों इंटरेस्ट रेट के बीच में उसको हम बोलते हैं नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन एंड दैट्स हाउ बेसिकली बैंक दे अर्न देयर इनकम सो यहाँ पे टॉपिक ये है कि विल बैंक्स मार्जिन डिप अगर इंटरेस्ट रेट 
और कम होते हैं आने वाले टाइम में क्योंकि अभी टाइट मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी की वजह से रेपो रेट इंक्रीज किया जा रहा था तो जो बैंक्स का नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन था वो इंक्रीज होता है इन केस ऑफ टाइट मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी सो ये की इंपॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशन है क्योंकि इकोनॉमिक्स में डेफिनेटली अप्लाइड क्वेश्चन ही पूछे जाते हैं एंड इस केस में सिंपली ये टर्म भी आ सकती है तो मीनिंग आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू एंड ये बता दिया टाइट मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी वाले केस में नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन इंक्रीज होता है सो so, यहाँ पे दो चार्ट्स दे रखे हैं जिसमें फर्स्ट वन इज शोइंग कि इंडिया स्टॉक फाइव बैंक्स दे सॉ स्टडी इंक्रीज इन दर इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन इन द प्रीवियस फाइनेंशियल ईयर and obviously that was because of the tight monetary policy and second graph is about the bank interest margins they often rise during the monetary tightening cycle so this is exactly what just i told you and isme you can see ki jo net interest margin hai wo depict kiya gaya hai of all the scheduled commercial banks so this is in percentage form and this is for one year so जब से वी आर हैविंग दिस टाइट मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी यू कैन सी दैट द नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन ऑफ बैंक इट हैज इंक्रीज एंड इज लाइक शार्पली इट हैज इंक्रीज एंड नाउ दिस एट अ स्टेबलाइजेशन पॉइंट नाउ विल जस्ट क्विकली गो थ्रू जहां जो मतलब इंपॉर्टेंट डिटेल्स मैंशन है सो वी सी की नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन इट इज रिफ्लेक्टिंग डिफरेंस बिटवीन वॉट बैंक अर्न फ्रॉम द इंटरेस्ट रेट ऑन द लोन सो मैंने बोला इसके थ्रू जो इंटरेस्ट बैंक्स लोन्स के थ्रू ऑन करने है करते हैं दैट इज देयर पार्ट ऑफ इनकम एंड जो इंटरेस्ट रेट्स दे हैव टू पे ऑन द डिपॉजिट सो उनको सब करके दो टाइप को इंटरेस्ट रेट्स को माइनस करके गेट द नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन सो ये नेट इनकम हो गई बेसिकली बैंक्स के लिए सो इंडीड दिस गैप इट एक्सपैंड जब इंटरेस्ट रेट हाइक किए जाते हैं सिंस एग्जिस्टिंग लोन्स पे जो इंटरेस्ट रेट है वो इंक्रीज हो जाता है तो हम ये हमेशा बोलते हैं कि जब टाइट मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी फॉलो की जाती है तो बोरोइंग कॉस्ट इंक्रीज हो जाती है बोरोइंग कॉस्ट क्यों इंक्रीज होती है क्योंकि जो लोन्स हैं उनके ऊपर इंटरेस्ट रेट इंक्रीज हो जाता है तो आपको एज अ बोरोवर हायर अमाउंट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट पे बैक करना पड़ता है तो इसलिए वी से बोरोइंग कॉस्ट इंक्रीजेस एंड जो नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन है वो भी इंक्रीज हो जाता है वाइल जो कॉस्ट ऑफ करंट एंड सेविंग्स अकाउंट डिपॉजिट्स रहती है वो बहुत लो इंटरेस्ट रेट रहता है उसमें इतने ज्यादा चेंजेस नहीं होते हैं बट एज एन वैन जो रेपो रेट चेंज होता है तो सिमिलरली जो इंटरेस्ट रेट लोन्स पे चार्ज किया जाता है वो भी फिर से मतलब एडजस्ट चेंज किया जाता है बट ऑल दो दैट्स टिपिकल ऑफ द मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी टाइटनिंग साइकिल्स एंड दिस टाइम वो स्पेशली फेवरेबल फॉर टू रीजन सो विल अंडरस्टैंड कि वो दो रीजन क्या है वाई इट फेवर दैंक्स नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन सो सिंस सेप्टेम्बर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन बैंक देव बीन रिक्वायर्ड to lend to the retail sector and micro small and medium enterprises at the interest rates linked to an external benchmark like repo rate so wo jo interest rate loans pe charge kiye jate hain they are externally linked to the benchmark which is repo rates so they are linked and by december 2022 such benchmark linked loans they have formed 48% of the outstanding floating rate rupee loans so they compose 48% which is sufficiently a huge amount so this effectively it pushes up the net interest margin by allowing better transmission of the repo rate hikes to lending rates so yahan pe hum transmission rate ki baat kare obviously generally hum bolte hain ki it is like definitely yahan pe time lag zarur dekhne ko milta hai but yahan pe it is saying ki जब हम एक्सटर्नल बेंचमार्क के थ्रू वी चेंज द इंटरेस्ट रेट्स ऑन द लोन्स सो इट लीड्स टू लाइक बेटर ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ द रेपो रेट हाइक्स एंड सेकंड रीजन है कि बैड लोन्स हैं दे आर लोएस्ट इन द इयर्स सो वन ऑफ द रीजंस ये भी था कि ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ लोन्स दे वर रिटर्न ऑफ सो दैट्स हाउ वी आर सीइंग कि बैड लोन्स दे वर आल्सो वन ऑफ द लोएस्ट एंड दिस रिमूव्ड द रिस्क अवर्जन टू लेंडिंग दैट कम्स व्हेन बैंक्स बैंक्स दे हैव अ हीप ऑफ नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट्स टू प्रोवाइड फॉर सो जब नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट्स बहुत ज्यादा इंक्रीज हो जाते हैं तो ऑब्वियसली बैंक्स Uh, when it comes to you know giving loans तो वो थोड़ा uh, क्या बोलते हैं और ज्यादा concerned हो जाते हैं when they provide loans so since अभी bad loans one of the lowest level पे थे तो इसलिए when it comes to giving loans तो उसमें banks were not having that kind of you know um, fear in their mind so but as the central banks around the world they would uh, prepare to unwind the monetary tightening what does it mean for the bank so aane wale time ki agar hum baat kare future ki baat kare to we are seeing ki tight monetary policy uh, last uh, mpc meeting mein bhi repo rate hike nahi kiya gaya tha it was a pause back then and so we are expecting ki aane wale time mein tight monetary policy ki jagah things would be like easing down so interest rate kam kiya jayega 
सो बैंक्स के लिए इसका क्या इफेक्ट हो सकता है सो इफ द रेट हाइक्स द इम्प्रूव बैंक मार्जिन इट विल पॉज so will a pause in the tightening or the eventual easing it will reduce the margins on the note is a question so tight monetary policy ki case mein since banks ke margin increase hote hain so jab um, tight monetary policy nahi hogi ya contractionary monetary policy nahi hogi and expansionary monetary policy hogi to kya the banks ke margin kam honge ki nahi so that would depend on the pricing power of the banks their liability structure and the overall economic growth so सिंपली या डायरेक्टली हम नहीं बोल सकते हैं कि देर इज लाइक डायरेक्ट लिंक या और बाकी फैक्टर्स नहीं है जो नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन को इम्पैक्ट करते हैं सो प्राइसिंग कवर द बैंक एक इम्पोर्टेंट फैक्टर है लाइबिलिटी स्ट्रक्चर एंड ओवरऑल इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ सो ये फैक्टर्स इम्पोर्टेंट रोल प्ले करेंगे वेन इट कम्स टू डिसाइडिंग द बैंक नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन इन केस ऑफ एक्सपेंशनरी मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी and another topic is ki 12 hours of work day this is karnataka and tamil nadu mein they have allowed for 12 hours of shifts for the factories and pehle this was at 8 hours but ab isko 12 ghante kar diya hai to kya baki states bhi aane wale time mein ye changes karenge ki nahi and workers ke liye kya impact hoga of this change सो इस मूव के पीछे सबसे पहले थिंकिंग क्या है वो समझना इम्पोर्टेंट है सो इंडिया वशेज टू बिकम अ ग्लोबल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग हब लाइक चाइना डेफिनेटली दिस इज द एम बट दैट फॉल्स फॉर रिफॉर्मिंग द आर्काइक लेबर लॉज एंड डेफिनेटली वी हैव लाइक वी हैव कम अप विद द फोर लेबर कोड्स एंड स्टेट्स जहाँ पे सब्सटैंशियल मैनुफैक्चरिंग बेस है वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट वन इज इन दी तमिलनाडु स्टेट एंड दे नाउ वॉन्ट टू रिटेन देयर एज वेन इट कम्स टू लाइक हैविंग अ large share of manufacturing base in the state so they want to attract multinational companies by allowing night shifts for the women in the additional work hours so agar koi particular state mein we are uh, seeing ki wahan pe manufacturing base proper setup kiya gaya hai and they are come from the largest ones across india so they are trying ki wo zyada zyada fdi attract kare to uske liye jo multinational companies hai they ask for night shifts for women and additional work hours so ye gradually changes kiye ja rahe hain by the respective states and 12 hour of work day is one of them so iska matlab ye nahi hai ki indian workers they will work more than like more over a week the overall work hours in the week remains capped at 48 so week mein jo aapko jitne ghante kaam karna padega uski cap 48 hours hi rahegi which means ki 4 day week against an earlier 5 or 6 days week jo hota tha so jo 12 hour wali work day limit increase ki gayi hai pehle 8 ghante thi to pehle aapko ek week mein around 5 to 6 days kaam karna padta tha but since ab like ट्वेल्व आर वर्क डे कर दिया गया है तो अब आपको फोर डे वीक मतलब हफ्ते में चार दिन ही काम करना पड़ेगा तो जो वीकली कैप है वो चेंज नहीं है दैट इज फोर्टी एट आवर्स ओनली सो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट्स को क्या फायदा होगा फैक्ट्रीज उनके पास दो शिफ्ट्स हो जाएंगी विच वुड मीन अ कॉस्ट एफिशिएंट वर्किंग मॉडल हो जाएगा क्योंकि एक इंसान चार दिन हफ्ते में काम करेगा तो दो शिफ्ट पॉसिबल है एंड प्रोडक्टिविटी इम्प्रूव होगी एफिशिएंसी इंक्रीज होगी क्योंकि कॉस्ट एफिशिएंट वर्किंग मॉडल सेटअप हो जाएगा एंड दैट्स द बेनिफिट जो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट्स दे कैन एंजॉय एंड दे कैन रीप सो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड केमिकल सेक्टर्स दे आर बेटर रेगुलेटेड एंड एज आर लार्ज फैक्ट्रीज सो इट्स नॉट क्लियर की जो स्मॉल फैक्ट्रीज है विल हाउ विल दे इम्प्लीमेंट दीज चेंजेस so absenteeism which is due to the longer working hours that is going to be a potential challenge and target talent pool ki baat ki gayi hai how oh, like what could be the impact on women so while extended hours they will be offered to women recruiters say ki it may get hard to hire them kyunki society does not change overnight obviously and there is a resistance regarding the overtime and the night shift specifically jab hum uh, women workers ki baat karte hain so as it is uh, it is a female dropouts they have increased from both the corporate offices and factories about 2 years of covid-19 pandemic and factories they have been making efforts to recruit women from tier 2 and tier 3 cities but new shift timings they could throw us spanner in the box so obviously women they are like obviously they are concerned about their safety and working during night is as a challenge for them and what we can learn from china is that china it pioneered the long work hours and over time it became popular across the technology startups and manufacturing companies 
So they have called this 996 work culture and employees, they were pushed to work from 9 to 9 for 6 days a week. Matlab, ek week mein they used to work 78 hours. Matlab, 12 ghante, 6 din ke liye kaam karo gai, ek week mein 72 hours ho gai. Many said ki this has created a competitive advantage for China. However, jab hum 2019 mein protest deke, Supreme People's Court, August 2021 mein said that the overtime practice was illegal. So it also published the guidelines on what constituted overtime work. So ultimately, it was overtime to practice ki gai, that was illegal. So accordingly, thoda so much ke, we need to like go ahead with changes in case of India's manufacturing units coming to financial, uh, sorry, we'll be taking up. So now we'll be taking up the financial express. Here, uh, Here we are seeing, so clamping down on the Punzi apps, it says finance minister center is working to clamp down on the financial apps that are taking investors for a ride with the false promises of liquidative returns. Finance minister has said this thing. So kuch apps aise hai jo malab, aapko aise tips deti hai ki aapko is share mein, is price pe you need to buy and sell. Malab, uh, aapko tips deti hai and you like get trapped into that. So that's basically Punzi apps and financial apps hai. So uh, the center is planning to clamp down on these kinds of apps. However, there's no plan yet to bring the financial influence under a separate regulatory framework. So social media space, specifically YouTube, you will be seeing what are a financial influence emerge when job financial tips provide. Karte so unke regarding abhi aisa koi separate regulation ki baat nahi ki ja rahi hai. So right time to boost the exports and our commerce and industry minister says ki the world is now looking up to India and its industries and this is the right time for entrepreneurs and industry players to grasp the opportunity and grow the exports. And government planning to clamp down on the Ponzi scheme. So there are apps which are coming out and reaching out to the people saying that your money will fetch you this much many of whom are the Punzi apps on which we are working with the Ministry of Electronics Information Technology, RBI, clamping down on them like never before. So, jo apps aapko aisa promise karte hai, please do not fall into uh, their traps and you'll also end up lo losing your capital, your money. So, at this stage, I'm not having any proposal for me to regulate the financial influer, influencers, but yes, a word of caution is important. So, this is what she said uh, when we talk about the financial influencers. So, imported price hikes behind the high inflation as one of the reasons uh, just because just inflation has been high in India. So, imported inflation, ki hum baat karte hai, crude oil, ki just again, inflation increase ho sakti hai because crude oil ke prices have increased so this is what when we are importing something and uske price increase ho jate so that's what is called as imported inflation so director general of imd is saying ki el nino it is going to be moderate and just the impact on monsoon that's going to be minimal. So, as a pehle bhi dekha gaya hai ki hamesha ye matlab nahi hota hai ki agar El Nino hone wala hai to monsoon pe negative impact bhoat zada hoga hai. Aise bhoat sari years huen jaya El Nino hua hai but monsoon pe itna zada impact nahi hua. So, this is what the forecast is saying even for this year. Ki negative impact of El Nino will be countered by the positive Indian Ocean Dipole. So, positive Indian Ocean Dipole hai, wo monsoon ko support karta hai. So, we are having that condition right now and a low snow cover over the North Hemisphere and Eurasia that will ultimately result in a normal monsoon. So, basically, here we have concepts clarity uh, hona bhi important hai. Indian Ocean Dipole, positive, negative meaning kya hota hai. El Nino, La Nina, uh, then El Nino Southern Oscillations and so just come bolte hain, ye sari cheeze important ho jati hai and this is an important part of geography also. Because monsoon ek important topic raha hai hamesha se. Coming to Indian Express, so here, okay like directly the world page is there. Okay anyways we'll go through it. Uh, here we have seen about Sudan, then 
ब्लैक सी ग्रेन डील तो ब्लैक सी वाला एरिया अपने आप इंपॉर्टेंट हो जाता है जी सेवन मीटिंग कॉल्स फॉर एक्सटेंडिंग यूक्रेन ब्लैक सी ग्रेन डील सो रशिया विच इनवेडेड इट्स नेबर दैट इज यूक्रेन uh it has strongly signaled that it will not allow the deal to continue beyond 18th may because a list of demands to facilitate its own grain and fertilizer exports has not been met so russia would not be supporting this deal and yeah matlab uh, the geography of this area is much more important rather than this deal तो ये इशू पहले न्यूज में हाईलाइट हुआ था जब इंडियन रेसलर्स दे लाइक लेवल चार्जेस अगेंस्ट द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ डब्ल्यू एफ आई चीफ द डब्ल्यू एफ आई प्रेसिडेंट इज द चीफ सो सेवन रेसलर्स दे नाउ अप्रोच द कॉप्स अगेंस्ट दिस पर्सन सो टॉप रेसलर्स दे हैव रिज्यूम देयर प्रोटेस्ट बैक एंड दे सीक प्रोब ऑफ द रिपोर्ट फाइंडिंग्स एंड seven women wrestlers they have filed separate police complaints against this bjp mp and wrestling federation of india's president who is the uh, bridge bhushan uh, sharan singh so he's been accused of sexual harassment and criminal intimidation so regarding women safety we need to know ki kya guidelines hain kya important uh, provisions hain and yahan pe uh, it is uh, like only about the wrestlers but broadly we need to know about those things so that is important for us from the examination perspective and moving forward so next important thing so sagar mala is facilitating atmanirbhar bharat with cutting edge technology so there is going to be inauguration of this national technology center for ports waterways and coast and innovation is critical and it has to be indigenous so innovation plus indigenous element is the important thing and imported goods they cannot be a source of innovation for india so these are the words of a prime minister and apart from that major strengths ki agar hum baat kare to field and laboratory investigation studies ki jayengi computer modeling for the coastal and port development wave and current action modeling over sediment transport modeling ship maneuvering studies dredging and disposal studies computer and laboratory simulations ship to ship interactions and clean energy clean and green energy in the shipping industries so this is about the center there are some pictures and developments so here you can see of floating solar panel and moving forward and having a look at other important topics for today so in the political hair coming to the editorial section so hair safeguarding the constitution case man and the bharati judgment prescribed this doctrine of basic structure it set the limits to parliamentary sovereignty also so we the people of india today begin celebrating the golden jubilee of case man and the bharati judgment which was there in 1973 so it has completed 50 years so all the important things related to it become very very important for our examination so us judgment mein it was the important jo outcome tha that was the basic structure doctrine and then coming forward here we see that golaknath case a matlab proper evolution is very important all jo important judgments thi we have this basic structure discredits the repeal of the constitution article 368 authorizes a constitutional amendment not the constitutional discretion or dismemberment so jo basic structure doctrine thi usme elements mention nahi kiye gaye ek proper list nahi hai ki universe matlab in cheezon pe it would be applicable jaise jaise aage different cases aate gaye supreme court kept on categorizing this is a part of the basic structure and isme changes amendments nahi kiye ja sakte hain so fundamental rights definitely it is one of them and apart from that jo important amendments rahi hain they are also important
So judicial independence, it is important as the essence of the rule of law, which embeds both decisional autonomy, institutional autonomy, that is the freedom from the pressure from the state. So rule of law means that the parameters of decision making and discretion that remain always circumscribed by the constitution and demands respect for the constitutional conventions also. So this is all these elements are very important for the judicial independence and autonomy. Then, and apart from this, the collision system se related to the debate tha between the executive and the judiciary, that is also important. So, kuch judiciary se related jo important topics in last one year, mein, all of them are very important. And these are few of them. So, two I have mentioned them and inform properly, critically, we analyze kar chuke. So, we will not be going through that again. And moving forward, so the basic structure doctrine is through we are able to keep the authoritarianism at bay. And obviously, government, ho, parliament, ho, executive, ho, malab, koi bhi organ, ho, they are not going to be like using their discretionary power. They're not going to act arbitrarily and as per their own discretion. So that's what basically basic structure doctrine has been able to achieve so far when it's going to complete 50 years. So what has now taken firm roots is the idea of certain essential values and eh, that keep the republic afloat. So basic structure doctrine, ye in hi cheezo ko protect karne ki baat karte ki kuch essential values hai jin ko aap change nahi kar sakte ho, jo humari foundation hai, jo humari basis hai of democracy. You can't change them. So isme we have the right to judicial review hai, basic norms of liberty, equality, free and fair elections hai, and then independent judiciary is important federal structure is important so india's strongest shield against an autocrat's whim continues to keep any right to us misadventure or authoritarian impunity at bay So basic structure doctrine, it also prevented the fundamental rights being eroded during the emergency. So in this context, uh, 30 or details, uh, agar aap find out karoge, so that would be important. Amala, uh, related to fundamental rights, jo emergency ki time mein, which can be taken away and which cannot be taken away. Is mein aapko clarity hona important hai. Apart from that, uh, In this article, the basic structure doctrine, it became part of our constitutional doctrine by a slender margin of seven is to six majority. So there were 13 uh, judge bench, jo, one of the highest rate during the case of the judgment. So the judgment rightly did not define ki what would be the basic structure or the essential features. Just like I said, the exact exact list nahi provide the Supreme Court ne back then that these elements are in the basic structure. Ke. And it is now like well accepted that these include the principles of federalism, ki baat kuro, secularism, separation of powers, independent judiciary, free fair, and period elections. So none of these features can ever be taken away. So that's very important. So as a question be asked, ki kuch ek list of elements aapko de denge and aapko identify karna ki which of them they are a part of the basic structure doctrine. So aapko is tarikhe se thora broadly if you will think so you will get to the right answer. Moving forward, coming to the explained page. So again, here the case of Nand Bharti judgment ki baat ki jari hai. What was this case and is ki kya legacy rahi hai over the last 50 years? So the divided court room said the parliament and the constitution rules of engagement. 50 years ago, on 24th of April 1973, the Supreme Court delivered its judgment in the case of Nand Bharti and versus the state of Kerala and others. The landmark case that redefined the relationship between parliament and the constitution by the narrowest possible margin that was 7 to 6 13 judge constitutional bench of the supreme court ruled the basic structure of the constitution is inviolable and it cannot be amended by the parliament so the basic structure uh, basic structure hai of the constitution of the democracy aap unko amend bhi nahi kar sakte unme koi bhi changes nahi kar sakte ho and they cannot be violated 
सो वी हैड दिस गोलकनाथ केस जिसमें इट वॉज इन सुप्रीम कोर्ट रिवर्स इट्स अर्लियर वर्डिक्ट एंड रूल की पार्लियामेंट के नॉट अमेंड द फंडामेंटल राइट गारंटीड बाई द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो दिस वॉज द वर्डिक्ट ऑफ द गोलकनाथ केस जो इससे पहले जजमेंट थी वो उनको लाइक सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने रिवर्स करके इट केम टू दिस कंक्लूजन एंड विद दिस वर्डिक्ट कि फंडामेंटल राइट्स को यू के नॉट अमेंड एंड पार्लियामेंट रिस्पॉन्डेड बाय अमेंडिंग द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन टू गिव इट सेल्फ द पावर टू अमेंड एनी पार्ट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो इस जजमेंट के बाद पार्लियामेंट केम अप विद कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट जिसमें बात की गई कि पार्लियामेंट के पावर पार्लियामेंट के पास पावर है टू अमेंड एनी पार्ट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड इट पास द लॉ दैट इट के नॉट बी रिव्यूड बाय द कोर्ट ऑल्सो तो जुडिशियल रिव्यू वाली पावर भी ले ली एंड ये भी बोल दिया कि पार्लियामेंट कोई भी पार्ट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन को अमेंड कर सकता है दैट पावर दैट पावर लाइज विद दी पार्लियामेंट बट दिस स्कोप ऑफ द पावर टू अमेंड स्पेशली जब हम बात करें राइट टू प्रॉपर्टी जो पहले फंडामेंटल राइट थी इट वॉज इम्पैक्टेड बाय द लैंड सीलिंग लॉज एंड दैट वॉज द सेंट्रल चैलेंज इन द केस ऑफ अनंत केस ऑल्सो सो मेजोरिटी रूलिंग में कोर्ट हेल्ड दैट द फंडामेंटल राइट कैन नॉट बी टेकन अवे बाई अमेंडिंग दैम इट्स की पार्लियामेंट हैज पास पावर्स टू अमेंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड ये भी अपेल किया गया कि लैंड सीलिंग लॉज बट इट ड्रू द लाइन बाई ऑब्जर्विंग की सर्टन पार्ट ऐसे हैं कि दे आर इनहेरेंट एंड इंट्रेंसिक टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड दैट इवन पार्लियामेंट के नॉट टच दैम सो कोर्ट रूल्ड दैट इन स्पिरिट अमेंडमेंट वुड नॉट वायलेट द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो पावर ऑफ अमेंडमेंट पार्लियामेंट के पास ही रहेगी बट उस पावर के थ्रू और बाय अमेंडिंग एनी पार्ट आप बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर को वायलेट नहीं कर सकते हो देन जब इंडिया में नेशनल इमरजेंसी पोज की गई 1975 में सो पॉपुलरली दिस केस वॉज नोन एज द इलेक्शन केस जो राज नारायण केस की हम बात कर रहे हैं 1975 में दिस वॉज देयर एंड 1975 में इंडिया में नेशनल इमरजेंसी भी इम्पोज की गई उस टाइम पे प्राइम मिनिस्टर वॉज इंदिरा गांधी सो उस टाइम पे भी फाइव जज बेंच ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इट है डिलीवर्ड द जजमेंट जिसमे अफॉर्मिंग द प्रिंसिपल लेड डाउन इन द केस ऑफ नंद रूलिंग की फाइव जजेस ऑन दिस बेंच दे वर ऑल्सो पार्ट ऑफ द बेंच कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड टू द केस ऑफ नंद रिव्यू सो दैट्स फेयर एंड मतलब ये केस ऑब्वियसली केस ऑफ नंद भारतीय जजमेंट के बाद ही था तो इसमें फिर से रिव्यू किया गया एंड द थिंग्स दे वर लाइक अपहेल्ड After that, uh, for more than two days, thirteen judge bench they heard the arguments from Palki Wala, who had represented the petitioners in case of Nand. However, no judicial record of this review hearing exists because it was abandoned midway. So, Fali Nariman uh, referred to this as a non-case, and the constitutional historian Granville Austin wrote that this moment marked a definite assertion of the judiciary against the majority in Parliament at the time. so that's there and supreme court has used this doctrine sparingly but it is pushed back against the attempts to shackle the judicial review so half century of application may uh, will be going through important cases jahan pe this doctrine of basic structure was used by the supreme court so here we are seeing Since nineteen seventy three, the year of this judgment, constitution, it has been amended more than sixty times, and five decades. May we see Supreme Court? It has tested constitutional amendments against this doctrine, at least in sixteen cases. So, in nine of those sixteen cases, Supreme Court ne upheld kya ki constitutional amendments that had been challenged on grounds of this violation of basic structure doctrine. So six of these cases they relate to reservations. जहाँ पे बात की गई quota for the OBCs, economically weaker section, and reservations in promotions. Apart from that, so ये सारी judgments जो particular judgments है क्या changes किए गए क्या upheld किया गया वो ये सब important हो जाते हैं. And next is that Supreme Court it has struck down a constitutional amendment entirely just once. which was the njac judgment which was the 99th amendment act of 2014 which established the national judicial appointments commission so this judgment 
इन दिस जजमेंट ये जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट थी इसको कम्प्लीटली सेटिसफाइड कर दिया गया इट वॉज कम्प्लीटली स्ट्रक डाउन सो दिस बॉडी वॉज नॉट सेटअप एंड बेसिकली कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट बात ये करती थी कि जो एन जे एस सी बनाया जाएगा दैट वुड बी फॉर दी अपॉइंटमेंट एंड ट्रांसफर ऑफ द जजेस सो इसमें जो कॉलेजियम सिस्टम के रिप्लेसमेंट की बात की जा रही थी बेसिकली सो अमेंडमेंट इट वॉज स्ट्रक डाउन बाई द फाइव जज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बेंच टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन में ऑन द ग्राउंड की इट थ्रेटन द जुडिशियल इंडिपेंडेंस which the court ruled it was a part of the basic structure basic feature of the constitution so judicial independence so uh, with time that's how we come to know about ki which all things are a part of the basic structure and base, basic feature of the constitution next uh, in the six instances 1973 se agar hum dekhe including case of nand ruling itself supreme court has partially struck down a constitutional amendment in all the cases provision that was struck down related to the denial of the judicial review so judicial review is also part of the basic feature and then we have this kihoto holon case which dealt with the 10th schedule so 10th schedule it is uh, the anti defection law so in this kyoto holon case uh, uh, 1992 mein ye hua supreme court upheld this constitution 52nd amendment act ke through 10th schedule ko constitution mein introduce kiya gaya and this was upheld by the supreme court in this kyoto holon case of 1992 so this is called the anti defection law and apart from this also ki this judgment completes 50 years the anti defection law it is already in use so this is naturally very important for us for the exam so the only portion of the amendment that was struck down was the one that stated ki decisions of the speaker relating to the disqualification cannot be judicially reviewed so they can be judicially reviewed so jab hum baat karte hain uh disqualification ki to power hai in the hands of lok sabha speaker but jo decision liya jayega usko judicially review kar sakta hai supreme court so bas ek ye provision delete kiya gaya tha and baki this judgment was upheld by the supreme court so a part of or a por portion of this constitutional 97th amendment act 2011 it was also set aside and this amendment it changed the legal regime for the cooperative societies and the court ruled the cooperative societies they are within the state and as opposed to interstate they will fall under the state list which means that a constitutional amendment relating to it must be ratified by half the number of states and सो एक इम्पोर्टेंट चीज थी उसके अलावा ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट की बात करें ऑफ नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू सो इट स्टेटेड की अगर कोई भी लॉ पास किया जाता है टू गिव इफेक्ट टू डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल सो इट के नॉट बी डीम्ड टू बी वर्ल्ड ऑन द ग्राउंड दैट इट टेक्स अवे और इट अब्रिज एनी ऑफ द राइट विच आर कंटेन इन आर्टिकल फोर्टीन नाइनटीन एंड थर्टी वन सो दीज वर दार्ट ऑफ द फंडामेंटल राइट एंड ये ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ अमेंडमेंट ने बात करी थी सो सो जो बाकी पोर्शन था दिस वाज़ द सेकंड हाफ सो ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ अमेंडमेंट ने लैंड सीलिंग लॉ की भी बात करी दिस वाज़ अपेल्ड बट जो सेकंड पोर्शन है जिसमें कि अगर आपको कोई लॉ आप पास कर रहे हो जो डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल्स को इम्प्लीमेंट करने की बात कर रहे हैं साथ ही साथ इट इज लीडिंग टू द वायलेशन ऑफ द फंडामेंटल राइट अंडर दीज थ्री आर्टिकल ऑफ फोर्टीन नाइनटीन एंड थर्टी वन तो you can't change that and basically that was termed acceptable as per this 25th amendment but supreme court set this aside uske alawa uh, raj narayan case ki hum baat kar chuke hain 1975 mein supreme court again applied this principle for the first time in this case only after the case of nand bharti judgment so it struck down the constitution of the 39th amendment ki gayi thi 1975 mein jisme सुप्रीम कोर्ट के ऊपर बार लगाया गया था एज पर दिस अमेंडमेंट फ्रॉम हियरिंग अ चैलेंज टू द इलेक्शन ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट प्राइम मिनिस्टर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंड स्पीकर ऑफ लोकसभा सो थर्टी नाइन्थ अमेंडमेंट नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव की ये बोल रही थी कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में चैलेंज नहीं किया जा सकता है इलेक्शन ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट प्राइम मिनिस्टर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंड स्पीकर ऑफ लोकसभा सो इवन दिस अमेंडमेंट वॉज कम्प्लीटली सेट असाइड बाई द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन दिस इंदिरा गांधी वर्सेज राज नारायण केस ऑफ नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव सो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट चीजें हैं इस आर्टिकल में जो हम डिस्कस कर रहे हैं दर लाइक एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट नेक्स्ट वी हैड दिस मिनरवा मिल्स केस ऑफ नाइनटीन एटी जिसमें सुप्रीम कोर्ट स्ट्रक डाउन अ क्लॉज जो इंसर्ट किया गया था इन आर्टिकल थ्री सिक्सटी एट दैट वॉज की पावर्स रिगार्डिंग 
the basically it was regarding the procedure to amend with the constitution so it said ki there shall be no limitation whatever on the constituent power of the parliament to amend by way of addition variation or repeal the provisions of this constitution so again this ko bhi set aside kiya gaya by the supreme court in minerva mills case so this was being the amendments in article 368 then we had this uh, p samba murthy versus state of andhra pradesh case 1986 mein so isme supreme court struck down a portion of the 32nd amendment of 1973 which constituted an administrative tribunal for andhra pradesh for service matters taking away jurisdiction of high court so again this was a violation of the basic feature basic structure and lastly we had this l chandra kumar versus union of india 1997 jisme top court struck down a portion of 42nd amendment which set up the administrative tribunals excluding judicial review by the high courts so this was not acceptable and this was ultra virus the constitution so again this thing was struck down by the supreme court so bahut sari important judgments ki humne baat kari ek tarike se humne proper evolution ki baat kari hai ki after 1973 kesavnand bharati judgment is judgment ko kahan kahan कौन से केसेस में यूज किया गया एंड इम्पोर्टेंट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट नंबर्स की भी हमने बात की है सो आई वु से दिस पर्टिकुलर पोर्शन इज एक्सट्रीमली इम्पोर्टेंट इसका आप स्क्रीन ले लो या इसका कहीं पे नोट डाउन कर लो यू कैन रिवाइज इट अगेन देन इकोनॉमी पेज पे आते हैं तो फाइनेंशियल 2024 में वी आर सीइंग द ट्रेंड रिवर्सल जहां पे जो फॉरेन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स है दे आर टर्निंग टू बी नेट बायर्स इन द फर्स्ट इन फर्स्ट फोर्टनाइट सो इस जो भी फर्स्ट अप्रैल 2023 से न्यू फाइनेंशियल ईयर स्टार्ट हुआ है तो फर्स्ट फोर्टनाइट में वी सॉ कि द फॉरेन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स दे हैव टर्न्ड आउट टू बी द नेट बायर्स सो अभी तक मेजर ट्रेंड यही चल रहा था दे वर टर्निंग आउट टू बी द नेट सेलर्स मतलब इंडियन कैपिटल मार्केट से दे वर एग्जिटिंग because of the increase in the interest rates and usa may be interest rate increase or it so unke liye zyada better option tha to invest in usa so that's why they were exiting and uski wajah se indian currency was depreciating so ye puri connectivity pata hona is important and depreciation appreciation se uh, export imports pe kya impact hota hai that is another thing wo bhi aapko pata hona important hai so finally that's all for today and जो भी आज लाइक आई वुड से वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट एनालिसिस था आज का सो प्लीज यू कैन लाइक सेव दिस वीडियो ओनली एंड आप इसको बाद में यू कैन रीविजिट इट अगेन एंड देर इज अ पीडीएफ लिंक आल्सो इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स यू कैन गो थ्रू दैट फॉर द रिविजन एंड डू सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल एंड हिट द लाइक बटन थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस